The processes by which our food is produced are too often overlooked in the quest to get it into our mouths cheaply and quickly. These nearsighted, profit-oriented tactics have a direct impact on the biological health of the planet. Annual crops, plants that grow for one season and die, make up the majority of the essential carbohydrates, proteins, and oils which feed humanity. To produce these staple grains and legumes under our current industrialized food system, the following processes take place. An intact perennial ecosystem must first be eradicated. The surface is plowed, exposing the fertile topsoil to the elements to be swept away by the wind and rain. Direct sunlight damages essential microbes and depletes the mineral content of the soil over time. Seeds are distributed into the bed. Petroleum-based synthetic chemical fertilizers and pesticides are sprayed, exterminating not only harmful weeds and other pests, but beneficial microbes as well. The susceptible pests die, but the insects, plants, and fungus which are fit for survival in this toxic environment live on and pass their chemically resistant genetic makeup to their offspring. The crops are harvested and processed. The field is plowed again in the next season, and the cycle continues. Many aspects of these destructive processes have been used since the invention of agriculture, but the advent of high-powered farming equipment and chemical treatment allow us to destroy ecosystems faster than any other culture to date. This system is highly dependent on increasingly limited and expensive fossil fuels to produce annual staple crops with byproducts of pollution, stronger pests, and weaker crops. Little by little, precious soil vanishes until all that remains is the bleached skeleton of the planet. Another shortcoming of traditional agriculture is that crop layout is two-dimensional. Product is planted like a grid with little regard to orientation in the third dimension. Of course, we are not two-dimensional beings, and the world is not flat. Imagine this surface to be one acre or hectare of annual crop field, gathering one acre of sunlight, the essential source of energy for all agricultural systems. Now we fold this surface into an elevated tent structure, and add two more of the same structures beside. On the same acre of land, we now have three times the amount of surface exposed to sunlight. If we place three half-sized tents underneath, representing food-producing plants adapted to living in moderate to heavy shade, we have four and a half times more plant surface exposed to sunlight. Additionally, more plant surface is exposed to the atmosphere, thus more CO2 in the air is converted to oxygen. This model shows only two layers, but the layering in nature goes way beyond that. The emergent layer comprises mature, exceptionally tall trees. The canopy layer typically receives the most sunlight in the forest. The understory is composed of mostly trees with varying degrees of shade tolerance. The shrub layer consists of shade-tolerant bushes and plants. The forest floor contains fungi and rapidly growing ephemeral plants, and the vines crawl over and up through the whole system. Layer for layer, a natural forest produces an abundance of edible material for its inhabitants without any human intervention. How can our modern culture obtain essential staple crops without destroying the planet? by creating agricultural ecosystems that imitate these rich natural systems. In short, restoration agriculture is the practice of producing staple foods using perennial crops in layered agricultural systems that actually improve the quality of the environment. The perennial agricultural vision begins on the abandoned farms and overgrazed pastures left by our system of eradication. Heavy grasses grow and decompose, increasing the depth and fertility of the topsoil. Many varieties of desirable crops are then planted. Some won't make it through the first winter. Among the cold, hardy survivors, some individuals will show early signs of seed production. These seeds are saved and planted again. A few years pass. Some of these fast-reproducing plants will produce even higher quantities of seeds, and some will be disease-resistant. Only the plants showing both characteristics are selected, and their seeds are used for the entire system. As the system matures, it consists only of highly productive, resilient crops. Additional plant material continues to be decomposed by fungi and bacteria in the soil. Farm machinery is necessary for some processes like harvesting, but these machines can be converted to run on vegetable oil. Weed control can be accomplished by rotating grazing animals through the system. Grazers eat the grasses and weeds that slow down tree growth and conveniently fertilize with their waste. Rather than using toxic pesticides, pest control and restoration agricultural systems is the same as in natural systems. 
The entire farm can also be designed with pocket ponds, landscaped valleys, swales, and ridges to distribute rainwater through the system. Contrary to annual crops that die each year, perennial plants can live for hundreds to thousands of years in a restoration agricultural system. These systems can be implemented on a backyard scale, on a farm and ranch scale, and are needed on a global scale. We can produce our staple crops worldwide while removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, purifying water, increasing the depth and fertility of the topsoil, providing wildlife habitat, and creating incredible beauty. Perennial restoration agricultural systems take time to grow. We need worldwide implementation and research starting now in order to realize these systems as an alternative to industrial agriculture. But the simple fact is, they work. New Forest Farm in Viola, Wisconsin is proof of that. This 106-acre perennial agricultural ecosystem is one of thousands of sustainable farms in the United States producing alternative staple crops while restoring the land which they're planted upon. New Forest Farm is headed by Mark Shepard, farmer and certified permaculture designer. In his book, Restoration Agriculture, from which the content of this film is based and heavily quoted, he provides in-depth information about the devastating consequences of annual agriculture and explains thoroughly his vision of a future world fed by staple crops from restoration agricultural systems. To find out how to get your own copy of the book, learn more about Mark's story, purchase sustainably produced nuts and meat, or inquire about tours of New Forest Farm, visit www.newforestfarm.us.